Okay. Now I'm recording ya. So uh, we are going to start on the question number one factors in Amber Heart. Alright. So this actually um, about the same question as we have discussed in tutorial. Alright. If you can check in the Google Classroom, I have actually shared the tutorial right on tutorial one and then i think that when i check the tutorial right we stop somewhere where do we stop we stop 15, at 15000 <laughs> where is you this extend, then you have to add back Why number 5 could madam remuneration uh -uh. kan uh, have we finished number 5 or not i think finish ini ya so kita start dengan uh, note number 6 ya so let's go into note number six and I also have here your chapter 14 business expenses in case we need to refer to uh, some of the content here, all right? Um, but we also have chapter 15, 16 and 17 which is related to corporate taxation, yeah? So especially those that we got to the promotion of export, all right, promotion of uh, research and development, uh, and then double deduction. So all this in the following chapters. So which is not yet scanned, all right? And put shared in the Google Classroom. But I think that we can uh, proceed with the question first, and we'll see whether we need um for the uh, references later. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into your staff uh, note number six. We have staff welfare comprises of staff medical and dental benefits. Leave passage for your directors, loan to employees written off, and maintenance of childcare center. So I've mentioned earlier, so every item in the notes, it has to appear in your, in your answer. So the first line, you will have your staff medical, note number six, staff welfare. Then you have number one, staff medical and dental benefits. Number one is that anything to do with your staff, anything to do with your client, or your goods is all business related. So when you say that the expense is business related, it should be allowable under section 33. So under staff, and medic, uh, staff medical and dental benefits, what would be the answer? Nil. Nil, right? And the leave passage ni memang clearly mentioned under section 39, it's not allowed, right? So you don't get confused leave passage masa you do your tax one where you talk about leave passage section 31B. So what you're looking at now is that under when you did your individual income tax, the leave passage received by the director is an income to the director and that income is assessed under 31B, alright? So to the directors as income but to the business, the company that give the leave passage to the directors, the leave passage is an expense, alright? But under this, we say that under section 39, the leave passage is not allowed, yeah? It's not allowed so you have to add back. So, but uh, when we get to the leave passage, generally it's not allowed, but you have to look into the changes in tax law. So, if you were to look into your leave passage, kat mana ya? Anyone can share where we can find leave passage? Dia dekat um, section 39, prohibited expenses. Kat mana ya? Um, let me refer to the... <laughs> Textbook, cepat sikit. Textbook page 261. 261. Where are we now? Oh, jauh ke bawah. I think so. 261 leave passage. Yes. We have it there. Ni kat mana sekarang? Alah, jauh lagi. 10 page ni. Hmm. Come on, come on. Tak keluar. Tu. 64. Okay, let's see 261. Mana? Hey, kalau main. Okay, 261. Woi, siapa ni buku ni? Lok mana? I think lok mana buku ni. Tak boleh. Yeah. Okay. So generally, leave passage is not allowed. See nampak section 39 1M. Right? So whenever you leave passage, it's not allowed. But, uh, the interesting dia bila third paragraph tu dia kata, however, ya, yeah, bila ada however, effective from YA 2007, provision of a benefit or amenity to an employee consisting of leave passage to facilitate a yearly event within Malaysia. Uh, kena highlightkan lagi kata within Malaysia tu, 
which involve the employer, employee, and immediate family members of the employee will be tax deductible. So whenever company arrange for a family event, right, or yearly event lah, contohnya dia buat family day dekat Langkawi, oh, sekarang ni semua orang nak cok booking Langkawi ni hotel kan. Alright, post COVID ni nak buat, okay, event, family event. So it has to be in Malaysia, so that expenses, alright, even though you have to pay for, bila leave person ni, you have to pay for the passage, means that for the airfare ke, or any transportation cost, any meal expenses, accommodation, all that is covered by the company and all this expense is allowable provided that is conducted in Malaysia. Yeah, you not what overseas at Singapore, next door you cannot, right? Boleh, you can do the family event, but the expenses will not be a deductible expense. Okay, uh, let's, is that clear? Okay, loan to employees written off. So, of course, uh, bila loan to employees, um, is it deductible or not? No. No. Yes or no? No. Not no. deductible. So, you add back. Basis? Why you add back? Tak tolak dari gaji dia. Tolak dari gaji dia? No. Sebab tak tolak. Sebab tak tolak. Abang dia kelal lah. Employees is non deductible to the company. Nah. Alright. So in the textbook, dia ada on that item actually. Uh, tak mana saya tak jumpa lah. Loan to employees. Dia ada. Dua lima dua. Ha? Dua lima dua. Patah balik lah. Kita patah balik. Eh, kat sini. Chapter 14 Mana kelas? Mana kelas? 258 Kukung ni boleh? Violation expense incurred Advance to employee Right? So advances to employee ni uh, Dia ada dua macam ni If you give advances to employee It means that it's an expense to the company Advance ni macam you give loan Right? But you know that you got back that amount Right? So when you get back For example, if in the case that you say that uh, what about loans to employee are not in the interest of the company in relation to the production of income So that's why it's not deductible, right? So, but the first paragraph under Ralph and Harris, alright, under terms of contract with the insurance agent gave advance against anticipated commission payable So, uh, the other case, the first paragraph kata uh, deductible, the second paragraph kata it's not deductible What makes the difference is that if you give loan to your employee and there is something that guarantee returns Right, for example, you bagi loan in the first case, alright, uh, you give advance against anticipated commission payment. Means that if the if the the employee are not able to pay, you know that you get the money from the commissions payable to the employee. So in that case, the 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 one that is given is a deductible. But if there is no guarantee, for example, there's no pledge against it, then the the inter, uh, the interest expense which is written off. So interest to bila you bagi tu is still not an it's not an expense yet. The problem is because if it becomes a bad debt or it become write off, right? So itu yang the expense then that expense you have to decide whether it's deductible or it's not deductible. So deductible if whenever they say that. So bila one apa? Deductible if there is a pledge behind or there's a guarantee that you get the money from some other the employee will be able to pay back. But the other one is not deductible. The other basis is that of a company, right? It's not the objective of the company is actually to give loan uh, to the employees, right? It's more of them making more profit, right? To to generate more income rather than to give loan. So that's why in general we normally say that the loan to employee, if it's written off, then it's non deductible. Okay, All right. Um. So the next item is. Uh, maintenance of child care center, right? Maintenance of child care center will be your treatment. Generally lah, alright, before you look Meal. into that. You nak kata apa? Meal kot. Meal. Kenapa meal? Sebab dia ada macam specific provision lah. Specific provision. Ah, you nak cakap specific provision, you bagi kat I. Section 34 berapa yang cakap specific provision on that? Double deduction. Hmm. 
Uh, apa tadi? Tak dapat gua kat belakang. Bang buka kan kipas panel lah. iPhone ni macam tak kuat okay. je. Okay. Alright. Um dia okay you look at the company is uh, why is the uh, the company manufacturer of sports equipment. Alright. So maknanya business is manufacturing. But kenapa you ada child care? Right? And child care center is not the the business of the company. Alright? But in order to for the government to encourage company to provide um, welfare fair to the employees, all right. So one of it is by providing childcare center at the employee's office, all right, or nearby. So in that case, if you provide, then the government say that okay, any expenses maintenance of the childcare center is given as a as a deduction. First, it was given as a deduction, all right? Until that is under section thirty four. Can you find me under section thirty four? Ya, yeah, ada dekat page 265. Allah nak buka balik page 265. Mari kita cari. Mana Question page 265? 34.6. 34.6, 2i kan? Mana? Tak keluar, tak keluar. Tu lah. Ada tapi I cannot see my face. I don't like it. I don't know why. Saya ke? Kalau orang tengok saya nampak lah. Can you see my face? Yes, madam. No, tak acik. Macam tu, I tak nampak. Yes, madam. Nampak, nampak awak eh nampak Pak Wai? Nampak. 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 Okay, 265. Okay, we have child care center here, 346i. Revenue expenses. You said revenue expenses incurred by the employer on the provision and maintenance of child care center. So, bila you cakap pasal revenue expenses, ni dia termasuk lah. You bayar gaji orang tu, nak maintain the child care center. Alright, so all this is given as a Special deduction. Bila special deduction, what will be your adjustment? Ha. Our maksud special deduction is allowable, right? So, bila allowable, uh, adjustment will be? Nil. Okay, nil. Okay. So, sekarang ni you tengok, benda tu under section 34, dia kata it's a, it's a special deduction. So, patutnya nil. Kat bawah tu dia kata apa? Capex. So, any capital expenditure on land premises building. Uh, uh, non deductible. Kenapa tak boleh? Because it's capital in nature. But, bila you ada child care center, katalah you ada that building child care center, ingat industrial building allowance? We have covered this before, right? Industrial building allowance, salah satu industrial building is child care center. Okay. So, under child care center, even though capital expenditure is non deductible, but the, the amount that you claim, the qualifying expenditure, you boleh claim industrial building allowance. So the rate is, annual allowance is 10%. 0% initial allowance, but annual allowance is 10%. 10%. So mana yang dapat benda tu? Uh, cumanya ada lagi satu. Dalam double deduction, okay. Uh, kat mana kita boleh cari double deduction on child care center? Uh, on page 274. Ingat ya, kat sini is section 34C. One, kata benda tu revenue expenditure is a single deduction. Remember that? Then you go to page 274. Oh, you ada buku ah? Ada. Hmm. Maknanya you bawa balik buku teks? Bawa. Ha, sebab sayang ke? Sebab ada homework ke apa? Tak ada jangka Ayah. benda ni. Sayang, sayang. Sayang. Macam nak study lah macam. Ayah, asyik. Niat tu ada tak apa. It's okay. Niat tu dah ada niat tu. Allah dah. <laughs> okay. Alright, nampak tak dekat sini double deduction of expenses? Nampak child care center. Resident person, it has to be resident person carry on the business we will be given double deduction on expenditure on the provision and maintenance of a child care center and child care allowance to the person employed by him. Maknanya kalau you bayar gaji pada you punya employee tu, so that expenses in this case get double, double deduction. The setting up of the child care is for the benefit of employee. Child care center has to be registered effective from 2013. So what do you understand from the one section 34 tadi and now dapat double deduction pula child care center. So for tax adjustment, you nak pakai yang mana? Duduk betul. Both are correct. One, 34.6. The other one double deduction. Duduk boleh. You nak yang mana? Double deduction. Of course you want to print double deduction. Sure. Kan? Sebab why double deduction will give you lower tax liability. Yeah. Right? So, katalah yeah. sekarang ni jodoh jawapan betul Dalam exam yang mana yang betul? 
Double deduction. deduction. deduction yeah. betul. Sebab walaupun single deduction betul tapi that is not the best answer. The best answer must be double deduction. So in that case, for childcare expenses revenue in nature, you can claim double deduction. Alright. And generally for all expenses yang boleh claim double deduction, the mesti allowable expense dulu. Alright, you tak boleh uh, uh, benda tu non allowable tiba-tiba you nak bagi double deduction dulu. You cannot do that. The expense must be deductible under section 34 or any section 33 then only the government can give double deduction. Yeah, so uh, it has to qualify. Macam halal lah, halal certification or you go for any ISO certification that is under section 34. But then you can also claim that as a double deduction, right? So in that case, you have to go for double deduction, right? So that covers for your child care. Okay, freight and insurance, in this case, uh, a premium paid to cyber insurance berhad, a company incorporated in Malaysia for goods imported. So I mentioned earlier, insurance ni dulu, previously it was given as a double deduction if it was insured with a Malaysian company. But since 2017, that's no longer applicable. Right, kalau you tengok double deduction, dah tak ada dah that insurance punya uh, code. Alright, so in that case, it's allowable, cuma you cannot claim double deduction. Why is it allowable? Because insurance is a common expenses lah. The company has to pay for insurance in order to to cover lah. Alright, for their goods. Alright, in this case, it goods imported ke, goods exported ke, goods transported ke. So it has to be covered by insurance. So company has to pay for that. So that is a business expense. So that's why it's allowable. It's just that you can no longer claim for double deduction for your freight and insurance. Okay. Uh, I think that I'm too fast. But okay that. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thank you, madam. So, okay, now we go to the number eight. We have general and administration expenses comprised of share food for shareholders attending annual general meeting. So, dekat sini, item number one ni, anything to do with shareholders is not allowed. Shareholders, AGM, atau printing of brochures, alright? Katalah printing of debentures, for example, you want to invite shareholders to buy your shares, right? Kita panggil debentures tu. Is it debentures? Am I correct? Oh, prospectus, eh tak ingat lah. Apa you panggil lah? The one that you want to call for shareholders semua tu. Is it debentures? Macam salah je. I don't know what's the term. Prospectus? Maybe prospectus tu. Yeah. <laughs> Jauhnya prospectus yang debentures. Okay, tak apa. Alright. Uh, ataupun any issuance of uh, share capital ke anything to do with shareholder is not allowed. So you just add back, yeah. Why is it not allowed? Allowed sebab shareholder is your capital, alright? It's a capital expenditure, right? So it's not allowed because you incur that for shareholders to increase their shares couple. So all these are capital in nature. Alright, annual subscription to trade association. So, bila you cakap pasal subscription ni, alright, is allowable, alright, of course in this case subscription ada dua. One is your first subscription, kita panggil apa, um, entrance fee, right, and the other one is the annually that you have to pay. So, if it's the first time, it's not allowed because it's initial. Yeah, but if an annual subscription is allowable, provided that, alright, the one that you subscribe for is something to do with your businesses. So remember that the company is a manufacturer. So do you think that it's relevant for the company to be a member of a trade association of manufacturers? Huh. Kalau you be a manufacturer, you nak jadi tak members of this association? Yes, most likely. Like and it will benefit the company. Of course, it can help the company to grow everything. Lah. So it's all related to the business. Even though tak nampak direct, but indirectly is a business expenses. Yeah. So, in this case, it's allowable. Uh, fine. Anything to do with fine, penalty is not allowed. So, tak payah baca ujung-ujung tu. Right? Uh, even though, even though, right? Uh, the fine is for sending goods to customer. Right? Even though it's for customer purpose, right? Uh, violation of law is not allowed. Yeah? So, add back. Compensation to pay to an ex staff for loss of employment. This one is also as allowable expense. Huh? Yeah, loss of employment uh, is, is allowable expenses. Yeah, 54,000. So the answer should be, should be new. Kenapa dia allowable, madam? Uh, 
Alright, sebab I mentioned earlier, anything to do with staff, alright, oh. is allowable. Yang ni add staff lah, of course lah. Kalau you bayar loss on flowman, mesti you bayar kat add staff. Tak kan, you bayar dekat staff yang masih kerja, bayar loss on flowman kan. But it's related to your staff lah. Yeah, so uh, that's why it's allowable. Unless, unless kalau payment tu, I'm trying to look at um, payment yang, the the payment, I'm just trying to make it more complicated. Don't want lah. Okay, katalah you pay your staff, alright, the staff leave the company and you have to pay him some amount of money so that that staff do not join another competitor company. Alright, kita panggil apa lah payment tu? Adalah the term dia tu ya. Yeah? So you have, you pay that staff, katalah I pay you 1 million so that you, within these three years, you cannot join any competitor's company. Katalah, a staff of Petronas. Example, ya. Yeah? Example. So, a very uh, high-end year staff, katalah. And then involved pula dalam IT, dalam data manipulation, everything. So, then he resigned. Alright, because he has a lot of information with him. So, in order to protect Petronas, Petronas, example, ya. Yeah? So, the Petronas say, okay, uh, if you want to resign, I will pay you 1 million ringgit but you cannot join any other company for three years, right? So, we stop you and in that case, that expense is capital in nature, right? But under normal circumstances, compensation paid to as staff for loss of employment is allowable expense, okay? Okay, we're talking about professional charges, ni, right? So, normally, you have to look at the nature of the expense, ah, whether it's trade-related or not, yeah? Legal fees or recovery of trade debts. Right, Jadi saya ada soalan. Okay, boleh. Ah, uh, what is the difference between refreshment payment dengan composition ni? Sama je. Boleh. Oh, sama je. Hmm. Tapi kalau ikut textbook dua enam sembilan dia nak deductible. Mana? Come let's see. Two six nine. Kalau business tutup kan? Two six nine. Oh ha, betul. Kalau business tutup. Kalau tak tahu eh. Okay, nak tengok balik. Nampak lah bu. 269. Retrenchment payment. Liquidation exercise. Okay, saya faham dah. Hmm. Uh, then the high court had that retrenchment is not the but the company was going out of business. Money expanded on retrenchment before could not be said to have wholly exclusive income in the product shop income. Right? Sebab company dah tutup. Right? And then you make payment. How is that that payment is in the production of income? Sebab dah tutup. Right? So that's how the punya justification lah. Sebab remember section 33 mesti expenses incurred in the pro in the production of income. So kalau dah company dah liquidate, you make payment. Payment for what? Bukan payment untuk production of income lagi. So that's why it's non deductible. Right? Okay. Any more question? Thank you. Okay. Right. So legal fees, the first one you nampak nampak. Kalau you nampak trade debts, or right, debts, ada two types of debts. Trade debts dengan non-trade debts. Trade debts ni not anything to do with your customer lah. You make you make sales, for example. Then ada, uh, of course, you pay uh, apa sales in on uh, sales on credit. Alright, of course. Then later after some time, lah, dah more than one year, it become bad debts, kan? So in this case, uh, the fees incurred, isunya ikan bukan masalah trade debt, masalah je legal fees. Fees tu untuk recovery of trade debt, that is allowable lah, alright, because it's related to your business. But if it's legal fees on uh, non-trade debt, then tak boleh lah, it's not allowed, ya. Yeah? Okay, uh, then you have income tax, legal fee for handy income tax appeal. Okay, why is it income tax appeal kat sini is not allowed? Anything to do with income tax actually is not in the production of income. Why? You pay tax after income generated already. You pay tax on your profit. So mean that the expenses incurred is after production of income, not in the production of income. Nampak tak? Yes. Nah. So because that, because, uh, because of that, ini income tax appeal pun, appeal pun untuk kes yang lama lah. Alright, tahun bila punya income tax punya, you nak appeal sekarang, so not in the current year punya issues. Alright, and then that the appeal is for the post punya tax lah. Alright, so the expenses not in the production of income. However, 
Right, kata lagi tangkap pasal um, cakap pasal income tax ni, dia dia ada yang kita panggil compliance. That the submission of income tax returns every year tu is a compliance. So you have to do that. You have to pay tax agent untuk assist you in submission of your tax return. So in that case, because it's compliance punya issue, so the law require you to submit income tax return. So the payment related to the submission regard to the compliance of law, that is deductible. Tapi kalau income tax, for example, in order for you, you pay your tax agent untuk uh, tax planning, right? How we can reduce your tax liability, for example. Or you pay your tax agent for the purpose of uh, acquisition. Okay, you not acquire asset, millions of asset, kan? So you have to decide which one is the better option, nak buy go high purchase ke, nak buy cash ke, or nak ambil loan ke. So that is non-compliance punya payment, right? You bayar pada tax agent, cuma nak tengok tax implication of your punya business transaction. So in that case, that is not allowable. So anything to be with tax planning, any tax appeal, all right, all these are non-deductible. Okay, even for tax submission pun, compliance now ada restriction kan, maximum I think now is 15,000 kot. Yang terbaru is 15,000. Uh, but uh, for 2019, how much is the tax? Tax filing fees berapa? Oh no, thank oh, you. No. Oh. Ada NSKP. Ice. Kita dengar? Sikit atas, atas hmm. Sikit 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 it's four o'clock. Sopok. Mana lah? Ni page apa ni? Ha? Mana? Tak habis eh? Siapa ke photo set ni? Cik Wah. Dia ada lagi lah page. Ni page. Kenapa buku ni tak sama dengan buku I ke? 276. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yang text filing tu chapter 15. So benda tu tak ada dalam ni. Alright, if you look into your chapter 15, page 280, there the income tax filing. Alright, it's allowable. But the amount and GST pun termasuk, the amount is restricted to 10,000 ringgit. So anything more than 10,000 is not allowed. So you have to add back lah. Katalah your tax filing with everything GST semua ada 12,000. So you can only allow 10,000. So you have to add back 2,000. Okay. But I think that this is up to 2009. Uh, the latest, the latest budget, which is for 2020, lah kot. Right? 2020, uh, it's a lot up to 15,000. But for you, in your case, you still have to apply your punya, whatever law mentioned in the textbook. Right? So in this case, you're using 2019. So kena pakai law as it in the 2019 textbook. So you say that it's 10,000, then you have to use 10,000 ringgit. Okay? Alright, next is renewal. Ha, nampak? Katanya renewal of trademark. Right. Generally, trademark is a capital in nature. Why is it capital? Because satu once you dapat trademark, it's not for one year. It's for certain number of years, trademark tu ya. Yeah? You can use your trademark, depends on maybe for five years or ten years. And then if you want to renew your trademark, you want to continue using the same trademark, then you have to pay for a renewal fees. So the first time trademark is capital in nature. But when it comes to renewal of your existing trademark, it's a deductible. Right? It's a, okay. So anything generally we say that anything that is you pay renewal, like repainting, re... Apa lagi re? Re... Apa lagi ya? Re... Repass. Okay? So that is allowable. Tapi renovation is a capital in nature. Yeah? Then you have staff recruitment, charges paid to an employment agency. Again, this one is deductible. A recruitment of a recruitment of staff is allowable. And then business zakat. So what will be your treatment for your business zakat? Add back. Kenapa you add back? Tolak kat bawah. Ha, sebab tolak kat bawah. Boleh tu jawab. Kenapa you add back? Tolak kat bawah. No, 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 no. 
It's not allowed, right? It's not. It's not a business expense. That's why you add back, right? You buy a zakat in the production of income, ke? Uh, ah, post post income kan? Uh, zakat is post production of income, so that's why it's not allowed. But the cut bawah is allowable because under section forty four, forty four C, right? It allows you to deduct your business zakat, but the amount is maximum 2.5% of your aggregate income. So your tax treatment here is that you have to add back your zakat dulu. So that's why I cakap, bila you nak buat adjustment, you kena tahu why you do that such adjustment. Why is it not allowable? Why you have to add back? Why? Why? Not only add back, add back je, tapi tak tahu kenapa you add back. So you know that, okay, business zakat, kenapa you add back because the amount, the expenses incurred is not in the production income. So you have to add back. Macam juga, uh, macam juga donation. You donate, is it because of production income? No kan? You, donation is nothing to do with your business pun. Sebenarnya, tak ada pun in the production of income. But that's why you have to add back your donation. Unless the donation mentioned under section 34. So 34 is a special deduction. That's why it's allowed as a deduction. Other than that, you have to add back dulu. Then only tolak against your aggregate income. Why is it allowed to be deducted against your aggregate income? Because section 44, seek allow that. Nampak tak? So you can understand your adjustment then only makes sense lah bila you buat, bila you come across expenses then you have to think uh, then only you can make uh, the adjustment. Okay, next is your note number 10. Repairs and maintenance. Okay, bila repairs and maintenance ni mainly you kena tengok whether it's capital or revenue in nature. Alright, kalau capital in nature then you have to add back and remember kalau the capital in nature can you claim capital allowance on the expense. Yeah. Kalau the revenue in nature, then it's allowable. Okay. So the first one is extension of the factory porch. Of course, extension is a capital in nature. Right. Uh, of factory porch managing director's parking bay. I think that this one is capital in nature. Uh, yeah. It's capital in nature. Right. Uh, can you claim, is this an industrial building allowance? Can you claim that as industrial building allowance? Yes. Yeah, under 10% uh, and 3% later. Right, take a note there. You add back 67,500. Tapi you tulis kat tepi situ, claim IDA. So that bila you buat kat bawah nanti, then you remember lah, okay, ni nak kena masuk and on top of the expenses. Tapi tak allowance, you kena claim industrial building allowance on this. Yeah, 10% and 3%. Uh, upgrading of the factory IT system. What do you think is of this? It's a capital in nature as well. Uh, right? Uh, and then for IT, what would be the, the rate? Can you claim capital allowance? Yes, on the IT system. Yeah. The rate is factory item. A factory IT system. 2020, right? I rasa 2020. Kat depan ni tak adalah pula bagi. Dalam exam of course kita akan bagi you table tu ya. Table for capital allowance. So I think IT is 20-20% juga ya. So you're going to claim that. And then you have director motor vehicle expenses but in this case for business purpose. So nampaknya benda tu motor vehicle expenses. So it's revenue in nature. Ya. Kalau dia cakap uh, expenses, uh, maintenance. So all these are revenue. Ya. So in that case, it's allowable. So nil, resurface. Ha, you rasa resurface ni apa? Repair. Yeah. treatment. Nil. Nil. Sebab resurface. Alright, resurface factory kapak tu maknanya dia tampal-tampal gitu je lah kot. And nampak lah. Alright, so resurface kalau dia buat baru surface yang baru, then it's a capital nature. Resurface tu dia tampal lubang-lubang tu je lah. Macam biasa kan, JKR buat. Okay. Uh, so that one is nil and then we have depreciation, of course you have to add back. And then we have note number 11, uh, dinners for client. Okay, kalau you talking pasal entertainment, you ada siapa? You ada client, you ada employees, you ada supplier. Betul? Supplier. So, Betul. employees is always 100% allowed. Client is always 50% allowed, 50% not allowed. So whenever you have 42,000, maknanya you are going to add back. 50% of that. Because why? 50% allow, 50% add back. Not allow. So you always have to add back 50% lah kalau clients. 
Kalau employees, alright, is nil. Okay, sponsorship of local cultural activity approved by the Ministry of Culture, Arts and Tourism. So this one is under entertainment. Tapi entertainment tu dia ada exception kan? Kalau you tengok bawah entertainment tu panjang. Right, so you really have to understand the entertainment expenses ni macam mana. Dia ada, sekarang ni dah tak ada entertainment expenses which is 100% not allowed. Tak ada. Dia sekarang ni entertainment expenses is uh, maximum 50% allowed ataupun 100% allowed. So you have to add back. So but sponsor your local cultural activity ni is allowable. Ya, yeah, ada exception kat situ. So it's nil. And cost of souvenirs at an international trade fair in New Zealand to promote Malaysian products. Is it single deduction or double deduction? Single. Mana you cakap? Kenapa you cakap single? Saya nak dalil dia. Page berapa? Cost of souvenirs. Market. Ada, ada, ada. ada. Ha, cari, cari. 259 madam. Ha 259 cakap apa? 259. Mana cari? 259. Oh 20 page nak kena cari tu. Okay proportional give at foreign trade fairs. Oh, lebih lah pula. Okay. Kat bawah ni you ada promotional gift at a foreign trade fair. Especially in case on promotional gift, souvenir bag at trade fair, trade or industrial held outside Malaysia are deductible. So in this case, it's outside Malaysia kan? In New Zealand, of course, to promote Malaysian products. So under that, you can claim single deduction. So sekarang ni, I being a, uh, uh, <coughs> a manufacturer, I dah tahu ada single deduction. Possible tak ada double deduction on that? So I can cari lah. Possible tak for me to claim this expense? Of course, because you incur to promote Malaysian products. So mestilah Malaysia suka kan? Kita promote Malaysian products. So I nak cari, ada tak double deduction? Possible tak? So I cari dalam promotion of exports Chapter 17 hmm. Page 289 I baru kat 285 tau Mencari-cari <laughs> Rasanya Malaysia kot double deduction Ah, tu 289 In Malaysia lah Expenses incurred on internet trade fair help in Malaysia for the purpose of promoting exports are allowed for deduction. Allowed for deduction weh. So, single ke double? Single lah. Sebab yang tu dia kata dekat Malaysia, Malaysia dah... kami dah. Ha? Double deduction dalam Malaysia kami dah. Kat mana? Dua lapan. Yang tadi media baca lah. So, dia kata is deductible je. Uh, allowable for deduction. Promotion export uh, allowable, dia tak, 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 dia tak kata pun allowable for double deduction. Single deduction je madam. Tapi I rasa patut boleh lah. I nak juga double je eh. Encourage company to venture into overseas exploring wider market and to promote Malaysian brand and name, name goods. Mestilah. Ni kan Malaysian brand kan? Ha, Malaysian products. Mesti ada double deduction je. Ya eh. Promote export. Hmm. Tapi kenapa dia ada dalam promotion or export ni? Exclude cost of exhibits. Hmm, tak adalah dia tak cakap double deduction pun. Nak juga tu nak juga. Pesa depan depan medium. Kat mana? Tu ah, tengah cari kat ni. Introduction. Page 42 mana tu? Apa? 40 lebih. Jap 42. Eh, 42. Kau biar betul. Ah, 41 madam. Bawah sekali. Empat. Kau ni biar betul. Page berapa? 41. Oh, masa dekat charger income. 
Okey. Ah. Ha. Betul betul. Itu buku kita. Awal sekali. 41 eh. Promotion of export. Hmm. Advertisement, promotion. You cakap A lah. Hmm. Okey. Tapi dia punya dalil tu tak kuat tu. Ha, dia ada satu tu je. Ha, ingat. Ah satu lagi tengok kat sini. Uh, corporate tax ada satu ke chapter untuk this topic you kena tengok corporate taxation. Chapter company taxation chapter 26. Take note of that. I want you ha uh, chapter Study. ni you memang kena actually chapter ni very good. Alright provided that you want to the chapter 14 16 17 tu you will find that chapter for, uh, 26 company taxation ni memang very good. Right? Ya dia tu. 4-5-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-
You cakap pasal lease rental of your machine ke, of your office equipment ke, no problem. It's allowable. But talking about motor vehicle, there are two types of motor vehicle. You have commercial car dengan passenger car. Commercial car is allowable, no problem. Commercial car contohnya you ada uh, van or the bus of the company, so it's allowable. Yeah, no problem. But when you talk about passenger car, so you refer to uh, car lease rental lah, right? The company pays for lease rental on the passenger car. Normally, it's for the top management. Directors of the company, managers of the company. So, the company lease a car or motor vehicle for their for your uses. And of course, it's for business purpose lah. So, talking about um, um, passenger car ni, you have to look at the cost of the motor vehicle. Alright? It's... So, cost on the medical whether it's uh, less than 150,000 or it's more than 150,000. I would say that less and equal, yeah, 150 and below or anything more than 150,000. The cost of the motor vehicle, yeah. So, kenapa tengok cost, maknanya sekarang ni, if the cost of the motor vehicle is less than 150,000, then the lease rental allow up to 100,000. Right? You allow up to 100,000. So then how one to decide is that you have to see lah how much the buyer lease rental. Because lease rental is allowed up to 100,000. So how much have you paid then you see. For the current year, YA 2019 for example, how much you pay and that payment exceed or below 100,000. If it's below 100,000, it's still allowable. But if it has exceeded 100,000, then the excess is not allowed. Yeah. But if the motor vehicle is more expensive, for example, rather than having leasing rental, sekarang ni kan orang pakai Malaysian pakai perdana. Alright? Mostly government pakai perdana. <laughs> Lease rental. Alright? They don't own the motor vehicle most of the time. Yeah? So, kalau pakai perdana boleh dah dapat 150,000 and below. I rasa lah. Right? But kalau you make Mercedes, of course lah, it's more than 150,000. Right? In order to why the government say like this is that Maybe to promote Malaysian car lah. Alright, in order to encourage companies to use Malaysian car which is below 150,000 as a lease rental to pay for lease rental. So that's why, oh, kalau you pakai Malaysian car, you dapat more than 100,000. Uh, 100, but kalau pakai kereta Mercedes, alright, you, I only allow you 50,000. Alright, maknanya, you dah kaya, okay, <laughs> tak ada, tak ada. Bukan macam tu. Alright, justificationnya, to me, is actually to promote Malaysian car lah which fall into this category. Yeah, so we allow up to 100,000 but if more than 150,000, we can only allow 50,000. Right, so what happened is that you must look at your lease rental. Right, how much you pay your lease rental for year one, year two and for example in 2019 sekarang dah berapa dah you bayar? How you compute of course year one, uh, whatever katalah RM 3,000 times by, uh, let's see the this start daripada October 2017. 2017 rasanya. Okay, a new cost. Oh, alamak. Ini, in this case, alright, uh, note number 12, uh, 190,000. So, dia call kat sini lah. Kau ni kau ni allow 50,000. So, how you want to compute is that uh, since October 2017. Okay, tell me when is the year end? Check kat atas. 30 June. 30th June. Yeah. Okay. So, bila you bayar the first is uh, monthly rate since October. So, October October 2017 until June 2018. Betul? So, this one is YA 2000. 2000 berapa ni? 18. 18. Yeah, tengok kat sini. 2018. How, how many months? 9. 9. Nine. Berapa per month? 2,900. So, dah berapa dah tu? Eh, mana punya calculator? 26,100. Apa? 26,100. Uh, you know. Okay. And then from 2019, one year kan? How much? 2012 times 2,900. Berapa? 34,800. 34,800. Okay. So, how you do is that, you tengok. Okay, year 2018, you pay 20, 26,100 and 2019, you pay 34,800. 
How much the company allow? Company allow total of fifty thousand. So kalau two thousand eighteen, you dah claim to twenty thousand six hundred. This one is allowable tau. When you do your 2018 your tax form, this amount is allowable. But when it comes to 2019, can you allow this amount? No. Partially. Why? Partially. Partially. So maknanya, uh, kalau 26,100, okay, first year dah claim. Second year, you incur another 34,800. Total 900, 0, 6,900. 6, 6, so maknanya, sini why 2019? Uh, 18 is allowed. So kat sini dah extra 50,000. Kan? So the excess 10,900 is the one add that back. you have to add back. So bila buat list rental, I rasa bila tengok list rental ni, I rasa macam, wah bestnya sebab I rasa I boleh dapat full mark. And bila list rental normally maxim, uh, minimum lah, 2-3 ticks. Sebab you have to show the workings. So working ni you buat on a separate paper kat belakang. Alright, so you show your workings, so I can check, oh betul tak you buat. Masalah ni student kadang-kadang salah dekat sini. Alright, dia salah kira. Bila dia salah kira, sini salah, sini salah, jadi salah lah. But I will still look at, okay you tahu you punya maximum is 50,000. So, somewhere lah that will indicate. So that's why bila ada list rental ni, you should be very happy. Because you boleh claim banyak sikit things. Yeah, but you must show your workings. Kadang-kadang student ada je jawapan satu ketul je. Aku tak tahu mana dia dapat. So, mana dia dapat pada orang sebelah ke? I don't know. Yeah. So, this is list rental. So, whenever you come across list rental, you know what to do, ya. Yeah? So, kalau dia 100,000, then everything is allowable lah. But sekarang ni, dia punya maximum is only 50,000. Uh, 50,000. Okay. Next is, wah, siapa tu? Yusuf. Dahsyat lah tengok sikit Yusuf. Wah. Okay. Hello. Ya. Yeah. Uh, dekat statement tu, dia macam salah lah. Kenapa? Dia 32,400 eh? Dekat Mana? atas eh? I punya mark, I punya, uh, kat mana yang salah ni? Apa ni? Soalan-soalan. Uh, oh dekat soalan. profit and loss account? Uh. Tak apa, jangan risau. You just buat ikut notes je. Right madam. Kadang-kadang memang, kita pun selalu tukar-tukar soalan je. Rahsia. Okay, next. Donation. Alright. So, bila donation, you have to see. Donation ada two types of donation. Uh, approved donation and unapproved donation. Okay. Uh, and then donation pun fall into two. One is section 34. Another one is section 44. Okay. Mana donation? So, in this example, dia kata apa? Uh, Sports equipment 2000 to an orphanage, which is an approved institute. In addition, each orphan received a cash donation and the total cash donation listed was 6000. Okay. What happened here is that bila you tengok donation, right, you sum is it an approved donation or unapproved? Right. Mana tahu approved, normally they must say approved institute lah. Yeah. So in this case, it's given to an approved institution. Yeah, cuma ni donation sekarang ni bila nak approve for you to get an approved donation. So this one approve section uh, then donation tu ada pula section 34 and section 44. Section 34 maknanya expenses of donation tu um, is allowable. Yeah, so bila dia allowable, you akan buat ni lah. So you kena tahu lah apa yang expenses of donation yang for section 34. It's very clear. Yeah, you tengok ada section 34. Uh, kalau you nak tengok on chapter 26 tu, company, uh, right, on page 460, ada statutory deduction. Yeah. Okay. 346G. Okay, 346G kat situ, uh, I read it. Provision of library facilities. Okay, salah. 346H. Provision of services and public amenities or contribution to charity, community project pertaining to education, health, housing, conservation or preservation of environment, enhancement of income of the poor and infrastructure ICT. 
Alright. So whenever you have this, any contribution ni, maknanya dia uh, company contribute for this purpose. So it's very, uh, it's very clear, very specific. Alright. It means that it has to be for that purpose. Alright. Provision of services or public amenities or contribution to charity. Alright. You sekarang ni, you donate pada orphanage. Orphanage, I don't think it falls into any of this. Alright. But orphanage, it falls under approved institute. Right, because it mentioned that it's an approved institute. So, bila approved institute, you kena tengok lah. For you to claim donation as an approved donation in section 44, what are the criteria? Hmm. So, yang itu, mana approved donation? Okay, on page 467, alright, company tax. The give of money made to government, state or government or local authority of an approved institute shall be given a deduction in arriving to total income. Give of money. Maknanya, it has to be monetary value only. Yeah. There is, if there is no sufficient, okay. Approved institute, uh, approved donation, but restricted to 10%. Kalau, but if you donate to government, macam yang baru ni, go COVID lah benda kan. So that one is no limit. Right? The contribution for that purpose, no limit. You can contribute whatever. Tak ada limit 10% tu. Okay. So what we have here now is that. Okay. Donation you tahu dah, benda tu memang approved institute. But the company donated equipment. 2,000. Boleh claim tak? Ha. Tak boleh. Kenapa? Why? Sebab the law say it has to be gift of money. Tahu? Gift of money 2,000. So kalau dia bagi sports equipment worth that amount, you cannot claim. You have to add back tapi tak boleh claim kat bawah. Faham tak? Okay, um. you tak boleh sebab kenapa in order for you to claim under a pulu donia, it has to be monetary, gift of money. So, kalau you nak claim, you jangan beli sport equipment. You bagi dua ribu dekat that inst orphanage institute. Ya, yeah? you bagi pada dua ribu pada orphanage institute, then you boleh claim that as a approved donation. Tapi kalau you pergi beli sport equipment 2,000, you cannot claim that. Number one. Number two. Each orphan receive a cash donation of 50,000. And total donation is, uh, total cash donation was 6,000. So, sekarang ni 6,000 ni, can you claim as a approved donation? Yes. Yes. Sebab? Sebab money. Sebab money. It's wrong. Kenapa it's wrong? Baca balik. The gift of money made to government, state government, local authority, or an approved institute. Sekarang ni give money dia bagi kepada siapa? Orphan. Orphan institute? Tak boleh kan? Tak boleh. Soalan ni memang best lah. <laughs> you kena add back RM2,000. Right? Because you have to add back donation. Whether approved or non-approved, you kena add back dulu unless dia section 34. So you add back 2000 and 6000 Dekat bawah, you tak boleh claim pun. Why? The first 2,000 because it's benefit in time. The 6,000 is not given to the uh, institution. It was given to the individual. So, you cannot claim also. Right? So, for for this, maknanya ada satu, dua, you have to add back dua kat atas. Dekat bawah, you tak boleh claim. Yeah? Alright. So, that is on donation. Tapi, katalah sekarang ni, Company nak donate pada IIUM. You all lah nak buat projek, nak buat pride, apa, nak buat sports lah, nak buat family day lah. So nak minta lah duit dekat MIA, nak minta duit dekat company, contoh lah kan. For that purpose, alright, because when company donate to institution, in this case, IIUM. Alright, so that one, company boleh bagi baju. That's why dia bagi baju, okay, BDO ke, Price Water House ke kan. Sebab, that one is allowable under section 34. Section 34 kata, donation is 
contribution to charity community project pertaining to education. Alright, so when they give you, you they bagi pada university education, alright, they boleh bagi being, uh, benefit in kind. So whatever the value of the t-shirts ke, you all minta apa ke, whatever lah you all minta kan, dia bagi that one is deductible. And that is given as a section 34. So maknanya you tak payah add back dulu. At that level, terus adjustment is nil. Alright, so bila you nak minta dekat company, you kena explain lah benda ni. You nak claim, nak minta sponsorship. Alright, so you kena explain lah pada company, oh kalau you donate to us, to IIUM, then whatever donation you can claim as a deduction under section 34. Barulah company, oh ya ke? Ah, okay lah, bagi banyak sikit lah sebab I nak claim banyak. Ah, macam tu. Alright, okay. And finally, we have miscellaneous expenses. Stamp duty to increase authorized share capital. Agak-agak apa ni? Ha. Allow ke tak? No. No, no. Cost? Capital expenditure. Capital expenditure. But related dengan shares. Yeah? Shares lah. Anything to do with share capital is not. Okay, the second one is on forex. Pernah dengar forex? Pernah. Kita belajar Foreign SJ. Ha, forex kan untuk for income tax punya adjustment. Forex you tengok macam ni. Realize ke unrealize? Ya, yeah? first tengok cari pattern tu. Realize ke unrealize? Bila dah tengok realize, okay. Uh, trade ke revenue or net? Okay, boleh lah. Revenue or capital expenditure. Okay. Realize or unrealize. Masa realize is that this one is a transaction. Why we might transact? Because of buying and selling. Revenue maknanya maybe you buy your stock. Yeah. Capital maybe you buy a machine from overseas. So that's why a transaction. Unrealize happen because other trans translation. So you can differentiate between transaction and translation. What happened translation at the end of the year, right, every company must do some adjustment. Kalau dia ada any forex uh, exposure, dia kena tengok. At the end of the day, book value dia, right, is it a gain or loss on the forex. So this one is a translation. Bila whenever you have a translation, it's not allowed. Right, the expenses is not allowed. Tapi you kena ingat, bila, uh, sebelum not allow ni, you kena ingat, uh, the forex ni could be gain or loss. Isn't it? So, bila loss is an expense, bila gain is a gain is an income. Alright? So, bila dia not allow, kalau loss, unrealized loss, you kena add back lah. Sebab dia not allow. Tapi kalau gain, you tolak balik. Kenapa you tolak balik? Gain kan you campur. So, you tolak balik lah because it's not allow. Because it's not Gain dekat sini is non taxable lah because dia unrealized lagi. Ya. Yeah? Loss kat sini pun is not uh, deductible because why? It's unrealized. So the adjustment whenever is unrealized, then you gain, you minus. Bila loss, you add back. Nampak? Nampak? Nampak. Okay. Kalau revenue expenditure, for example, you buy your stock ataupun you buy your machine. Alright. Again, you are the loss and gain. So kalau realize loss is nil, gain pun nil lah. So loss maknanya the allow expense is allowable. Gain means that the gain is taxable. So there's no adjustment that you need you need to do. So going back to your Okay. Okay. So dekat sini you ada apa? Uh, forex uh, gain on export unrealized. Bila nampak unrealized ya, you nampak benda tu jadi confused sebab dia bracket negatif. Kenapa dia bracket 22,000? Because this is a gain. The loss. Gain. Oh ya yeah, gain. Ha, tapi kenapa dia bracket? Sebab dia dalam expenses. Kan? Dia dalam expenses. So bila dia gain dia kena letak dalam bracket lah. Negatif. Okay. So in this case kalau gain remember. Kalau benda tu unrealized gain you kena tolak balik. So you minus 22,000. Walaupun kat sini ni nampak minus 22,000 but the adjustment will be minus 22,000 juga. Faham tak? Ini presentation je. Nak menunjukkan benda tu gain dalam 
expenses. Right? And then forex or loss of import again is unrealized. Bila loss you add, add back, add back. 7,000. Yeah? Okay. Then you have, then from here, habis dah lah adjustment. Once you have finished your adjustment, then you have to compute your adjusted income. So whatever adjusted income, it doesn't matter. The amount is irrelevant. <laughs> Yang penting, the term adjusted income. Ada satu tip for the term adjusted income. So okay. janganlah kira tiga, empat kali nak kira how much is the adjusted income. Don't worry. Tak ada masa pun untuk that figure. Yeah. And then you add on balancing charge. Remember, your format must be adjusted income plus balancing charge minus capital allowance. Yeah. And remember that your capital allowance is is made up of brought forward. You kena tunjuk eh, format eh. Ada student adjusted income tolak CA campur BC. Jawapan akan sama tapi salah. Alright, format kena betul. So from your adjusted income, campur balancing charge minus capital allowance. And this capital allowance is made up of brought forward, current year and balancing allowance. Show your format correctly. Right? So in this case, how much is your... Jangan nak tengok check je. Oh, ada dalam group. Sorry. Nanti ya, Lokman. Saya masukkan. Okay. Oh. Uh. Okay. So you are the brought forward of 13,500. And then uh, capital allowance excluding new asset. Kat mana not as a uh, new asset ni kat mana? Yang baru dan eterior. Yang tadi ah? Kereta baru dan kereta? Mana dan kereta dan kereta baru? Bahaya ni. You auditor ke accountant ni? Ha, cuba. Mana kenapa is this enough current year to 15000 je? Hmm. Oh. Nampak tak tadi I dah so buat note kan? Ha itulah. IT Dia system. Ha dekat IT system and ha kat mana entah tadi. Ha ni ah repair and maintenance note number 10. Nampak? Ya ni ah Porsche ni. Porsche ni jatuh dalam industry building allowance. So you ada 67. So you kena buat satu another um another uh, worksheet kat, untuk your working. You're the Porsche of QE then 6,700 for the 2019 kan? Ada IA 10%, AA 3%. And then factory IT system, factory yang betul IT system, 31,500, IA 20%, AA 20%. So ada dua item lah, ya. Yeah? So uh, that one you have to show additional uh, so, uh, capital allowance lah. So show, show you're working there. What else do you have? Kejap lagi eh. And then... Uh, the list, list madam. <laughs> HR the list. Okay. Yang list rental tadi? Uh. Uh, siapa yang cakap tadi? Nak tengok sikit siapa yang so claim list rental ni? Ni? Ni nak claim apa ni? Cakap kan? Ni nak claim apa? Can you claim capital allowance on your list motor vehicle? Eh, tak boleh. Dia hire purchase je. Hire purchase je? You boleh claim capital allowance. Please rental This kan tadi you dah claim that as a lower expense. Tapi you nak claim lagi sekali capital allowance. You memang nak kena lah dengan lembaga hasil. Tau? Lease rental is an expense. It's a revenue expenditure. You dah claim dah benda tu. You dah claim dah benda tu so you tak boleh claim lagi capital allowance. In order for you to claim capital allowance, number one, you must own the asset. You own tak lease rental? Uh, uh. You are just leasing. They are the lessee dengan lessor. So in this case, you tak boleh claim capital allowance because you do not own the asset. Right? Uh, incur, of course, you incur, tapi it's not for you to purchase that. You incur revenue expenditure. So for lease rental, you do not claim any capital, capital allowance. Okay. Okay, so then you have your uh, uh, no balancing charge, 
right? But if there is any information at the top saying about disposal of an asset, right? You dispose an asset, then you, you have to compute the BA and BC, right? What is your residual expenditure? How much your balancing charge, balance allowance? So then you have to show your workings. In this case, there's no disposal, so that, that's why this, this blessing charge pun tak ada. Alright, so once you have your statutory income minus your, eh, you ada business two tak? Is there any business two income? Ada. Uh, ada. Rental kan? Eh, tak mana? Mana business two? Tak ada lah. Note number satu, interest, dividend, rental. Tak ada, tak ada. Bukan soalan ni. So in this case, you compute lah statutory income. Alright, you boleh complete, uh, compute statutory income. Then only you minus your loss brought forward ni. Student mostly dia buat apa? Uh, loss kat sini pun dia tambah kat sini lagi satu. Loss brought forward dia buat kat sini. Which is wrong lah. Loss brought forward is not part of the capital allowance. Ya. Yeah? Because loss brought forward is after aggregate statutory income. Yeah, careful with that. So once you have your SI, then you minus loss brought forward of 35,550. Then only you add on your other income. What is your other income? Then you mula start balik lah. Tadi remember, mula-mula you ada apa? You ada interest. Right, interest from fixed deposit. So you kena tolong interest. But this interest, how much is the interest from the... Uh, Interest here, how much tadi you you minus 35,000 kan? So sekarang ni you nak letak apa dekat interest kat section 4C ni? Minus 35,000. Siapa yang tak nampak? Okay. Once you dah dapat statutory income, minus loss brought forward. Then you add, alright? Section 4C, you ada interest. But interest here, how much is the interest? 35,000. But how much are you going to put here? Is it 35,000? Tak. No. Why? So nak letak apa ni? Exempted. Why is it exempted? Foreign. Uh, because it's a for, from overseas, it's a foreign income. That's why it's exempted. Then you have your uh, for dividend. Uh, dividend. Right? Dividend from uh, interim. Then you have your Final. So what you put here? Ha, nak letak apa ni kat sini? Agentik kot. Okay? Ha, banyak figure tu. Pilih-pilih. Nak pilih mana? Dividend from Fair Sendian Berhad, Interim and Final. Ada dua. So nak letak apa ni? Hello. Hello, hello. Tak dengar lah, saya tak dengar lah. Exam, madam. Kenapa exam? Sebab dia interest. First year. Hah? Next week? Huh? <laughs> First already deduct the tax. Because dividend is under impute, uh, single tier system sekarang. Nak dengar single tier? Single tier. First nah. Year. Sekarang ni, in the hand of the Dia dah bayar, company fair silam berhad Of course, the company should receive 700,000 But because the company fair silam berhad has paid tax on your behalf 24% So you only get 504,000 So when it comes to your tax computation, you are not going to pay anymore That's why you tulis final Right? I tak tulis exam Huh? Sometimes orang tulis exam lah I still tak boleh nak terima benda tu because for me, it's not exempted to me is that tax has been paid at source. Kalau exempted mana you akan dapat 700,000. You akan dapat 500,000. But in this case you only got 504 dengan 360. So the dividend is not exempted. It's just that it's final. You don't have to bring that to tax again. But from the Hong Kong one, uh, itu final. Itu exam. Sorry. Itu exam. Why? Because it's not tax deductible. It's not taxation. It's not taxable because exempted foreign source income. Can you see the difference between final dividend and exam dividend? Right? Yeah. Dalam tax school, of course, tak mana-mana pun yang kena buat exam. But I want you to understand the difference between final dividend and exam dividend. But you can also have dividend from Malaysia which is exempted. Contohnya katalah, 
ni tax tu eh tak bayar tak belajar lagi ya eh. uh, company yang bayar uh, dividend which is exempt from tax ya yeah. dia ada juga company that's why kalau you nak invest in shares you tengok company yang bayar tax exempt dividends ya yeah. so maknanya kalau company tu declare tax exempt dividend maknanya there's no tax on the dividend what you get is gross amount so okay so in that case ah uh, then only you to look exempt lah because why there's no tax on the dividend why because the dividend is an exam dividend so benda tu kita akan buat bila kita buat tax incentive later okay right so that is your dividend then you have one more rental section 4d lah the rental income but again is exempted because it's in per right so it's a uh, foreign source income lagi satu ya the rental exam so all in eh kenapa interest kat sini exam ah oh sebab tadi overseas so all this income is exempted yeah so then you have your aggregate income then approved donation pun tak boleh claim right remember tadi sebab dia uh, benefit in kind and then the donation was given to the orphans and then you have a, uh, you have zakat yeah. yeah zakat how much is zakat business zakat zakat tadi 45000 45000 so you kena check zakat tu You think about aggregate income you berapa, you buat tunjuk, kena tunjuk 2.5% Right, it doesn't matter lah you punya aggregate income tu betul ke tak But you must show that business zakat tu 2.5% of your aggregate income. aggregate income The amount is irrelevant tau, bukanlah irrelevant Tak adalah I mark tu, tapi you kena show me that you know Okay, I nak tolak business zakat It should be 2.5% maximum of my aggregate income Ya, yeah? kalau you boleh claim everything, okay lah Otherwise you have to restrict your amount lah to 10% of your answer tau Whatever aggregate income tu, you tengok lah what is 2.5% of that. So from there you get your total income which is also your chargeable income. Okay, siapa nak jawapan? Try hmm. dapatkan chargeable income 313536. Chargeable income 313536. If you can get this, then you should have about 60 ticks and that give you 30 marks. 30 marks. Hmm. Boleh? Okay, I show you lah sekejap. Tapi tak nak tunjuk. Jangan nak snap snap eh. Cik, jangan nak snap snap eh. Uh, I want you to, tapi this one is not format yang I nak lah. Bukanlah format I nak. Uh, what I buat ni? Pergi. Pencil. Apa benda yang buat lah? I pun tak tahu apa buat. Command S. Dia tak jadi. Okay, stop sharing sekejap. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Uh, I want you, remember tadi kita ada note number one, number two lah. Kat sini dia punya format dia tak ada letak number note. So, I want you to put a note to that. Note number one, note number two, note number three, dot dot dot, note empat, dot 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 dot, gitu ya. Alright, so you put that, uh, itu. And then, dia nampak? Tik dia memang macam ni lah. So every item ada satu tik, satu tik, satu tik. Ya. Yeah? Uh, dua tik kat sini kenapa? Macam EPF tu you have to show me some workings lah. To show that uh, the 19% working remember? Ah, uh, You show me that separate page. Then I bagi you two ticks. Kalau you tak tunjuk kat I, I bagi satu tik je. Okay. Hmm, childcare double deduction. So all that one tik, tik, tik. Okay. So that's why katalah macam kat sini kan. Kalau you malas nak tulis benda tu nil. You just tinggalkan, you just leave it. You don't mention pun that expenses ke nak buat adjustment ke. So you tak adalah makan untuk nil tu. Right, that's why you have to put those nil. Kalau nil-nil saja dah berapa makan dah kan. So ada student yang fail sebab dia tak buat nil tu lah. Okay, and then you have your balancing charge tak ada. Then you show me. Uh, right. In this case, the tunjuk. Um, Alright, the the computation of the capital allowance is in the same answer sheet. Yeah. You can do it here or you can do it on a separate paper, right, separately. Then you just masukkan figure kat situ lah. We look into your working and then you have your statutory income. Statutory income normally kita ada satu tip for the term but not for the figure. Yeah. And then business loss brought forward. Then you have other income. And then donation is not given. And then you have your zakat. See, it's 2.3%. 2.5%. So, maknanya you don't, uh, your zakat 45,000 tadi, you tak boleh claim everything pun sebab Your aggregate income is only 321,000. So your zakat is very restricted. So you have to show me that okay, business zakat restricted 2.5% of your aggregate income. So you have to show me that you know the rule, the rules lah. 
Okay. Your total income or chargeable income is 313536. Okay. So these are working for the for the EPF lah tadi note tadi. Yeah. So um all right, it's already 452. I think that I stop here. Any question? You can continue uh, doing your other two, uh, other few more questions, can? Other three, yeah. right? And you can find many more right question on corporate taxation. And please also consider yeah, chapter twenty six to company taxation. Right, uh, it's a summary lah of all your of what we have discussed, of what you have understood from chapter four. And then pergi chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, lah, everything dekat chapter 26, summarize. Yeah? So, please have a look into that lah. Okay. So, Madam, Madam bila? 26 dan 6 kan? Oh, okay. Sampai topik. Topik. Macam dah discuss. Nanti saya bagi balik lah. Okay. Ha? Nanti saya inform balik. Dah ada dah soalan dah ada. Nak buat esok boleh? Ah, ada DMC pukul berapa? Nanti 9am Kita pun nak 9am juga Okay tak apa nanti kita discuss balik Ya yeah? Hopefully I remember that 26 dan 6 tu ada DMC lah hmm. Kita buat Nantilah kita discuss balik Ya yeah, dalam WhatsApp group pun okay juga Okay, if you don't have anything else, I want to thank you for your participation and your attention. I hope that we have learned something today. Uh, please do a lot more exercises, right? You cannot uh, expect me to do another question code, yeah, because we have many more to cover, all right? But you can continue you, uh, doing a question on your corporate tax because this question normally carries 30 marks, right? If you can do well in your corporate tax, ada tau dah? Kalau student buat final exam, corporate tech dia memang okay, most likely yang lain pun okay. Sebab konsep kuat. Right, because this is the basic lah. Later you nak buat tax incentive, kalau you punya format corporate tax tak kuat, you have problem. Yeah, so I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you for attention again. Um, anything else? Ada nak esok ada kelas. Esok pagi. Eh, lah. Dia orang kena tengok video I ni. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Kan? Ais sekarang pun bagus juga. Tu tak jelas. Hmm. Sebab esok dia kena tengok video ni. Betul tak? Takkan nak ajar topik baru dah. Tak apa. Esok dia kena tengok video ni. Betul. You all buat apa? You all kena buat tutorial. Ha macam tu. Betul. Alright. Okay. I'll see you again insyaAllah uh, Thursday. Alright. So Thursday 3.30 I akan masuk topik baru kot. Hmm. Yeah. So I will update in the WhatsApp group. So with that, I thank you again and have a nice day. Have a good rest. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Andam. Bye. Bye.